Hi, welcome back to Cooking Under Quarantine. Uh, I'm Chef John of J Squared Food. And, you know, for me, comfort food is such a way to feel better about anything that's going on in my life. Um, it gives you a certain warmth and it tells a story first and foremost. And I think that, especially now, it's text time, put it lightly everywhere. Uh, having something comforting like this jambalaya that we're about to cook uh, is, you know, it'll really make you feel more from the inside out. So this is um, my riff on a uh, classic Cajun jambalaya. We are going to skip the seafood in this version, but I will tell you how you can incorporate that if you wanted to. This will be a chicken and sausage. So I have some, uh, this is some like andouille sausage. Uh, which is usually smoked, um, and it's a little spicy, it's, it's very Cajun. If you want to do kosher brand, um, Jack's is really good. Um, and we're going to use chicken breast. You could use chicken thighs, you could use chicken on the bone, although that would take longer to cook. Um, what have you. And then you need some veggies, you need onions, peppers, and carrots in this version. Oftentimes, it's the Cajun, uh, Mirapaw or the Holy Trinity for most dishes is peppers, onions, and celery. I'm not a huge fan of celery, so I'm substituting this carrot, this mega carrot. And then scallions for garnish, and we have tomatoes and broth. So let's get started. So, first thing you should do is heat up a big pan. It should be, I'd say it should have a good sized lip because we're going to put every cook everything in this. Just start heating up in, say, medium, medium high. Um, and do a little bit of oil in the bottom. Not too much because, remember, the sausage is going to cook first. And it, the sausage also has fat in it that will be released. Um, while you're cooking it, we're actually going to cook the rest of the veggies in the sausage fat. Yum! So, um, put your sausage in. And it'll start to cook, don't worry. And you'll start to hear a sizzle in a minute. And just cook that until it's mostly cooked through. Um, I'd say it's going to probably take about 5 or 10 minutes. And then we're going to pull it out, slice it up, and cook the rest of our veggies. So. Uh, jambalaya is a one-pot dish, so we're going to put everything into it. But if you want to put other things, if you really have rice as the main component, and sort of binds everything together, you could do it with couscous or quinoa as sort of like a more healthier riff, but rice is usually the best bet. So, um, use the sizzling, just let it go. It doesn't need to be fully cooked. And while we're doing that, we can prep the rest of our stuff. So, so, I am going to cut our carrots. I'd say you want them in bite sized chunks, they don't need to be tiny. But, that happens sometimes. But, you don't want them to be super small either. So, I'll cut, I'd say like maybe quarter inch pieces, but you can have it chunky, you can have it not chunky, it really doesn't matter, it's just going to continue cooking with the, when we put in all the liquid and everything, so it doesn't have to be perfect, we like it kind of rusted a little bit, we just want everything of sort of similar stuff. This is like atomic energy carrot. I don't know what it was feeding on, but it's big. Alright. I don't even know if we need the whole carrot. I feel like maybe that's enough. Um, I am on team skin on carrot. A lot of people will say you don't have to. It is perfectly healthy, uh, and I don't feel it. I, there's a lot of vitamins and nutrients, so it's perfectly fine. Just make sure you fix it. 
Perfect. So I'm just gonna take a bowl. All my veggies. I've chopped. That's all ready to go. Go. All right. Now we've got carrots. Next up, we got peppers. We just peppers super easy. Just going cut out the middle. Cut out some of the white veiny stuff. Not all of it. Fingers. No fancy chopping techniques required. Alright. And then same thing. Cut them into the top. And I'm using green carrots, green bell peppers. But you can use red, orange, yellow, just you need just regular sweet bell peppers. I would not use a hot pepper at this point. We'll spice it up later with the favorite hot sauce, you know, cayenne. Uh, but if you use the hot pepper now, it would you want the, the sweet pepper in the sweetness of the fish, and they have like a wonderful flavor uh, when they're cooked. So I say like peppers. And so, uh, I eat those in New Orleans. I've been there a few times over the years. I have friends who make it over here. I just walk down the just like drinking and all day and go to the pool or jazz music with so much live music on Bourbon Street. It's a uh, comforting memory for me. And when I eat this dish, yeah, it reminds me of that first time. Uh, the food there is just so delicious. So, uh, the sauce is just kind of good. It's just going to heat up for a minute while we get everything out. And put them in a bowl, actually, for all the cleaning. Because it'll hold in more of the juices as they come out, as opposed to a plate that might run all over the place. So we're just going to let that sit for a little bit. We'll keep cooking for a couple minutes, even though it's off the heat. And we will slice it up later. Now we also have onions. This plain, I just have plain yellow onion. Medallia, white onion, you can even use red onion, although red onion is a little sharper. I mean, it's made a little bit more for dishes where you want either that punch or where you're not going to cook it, where it's like raw, so like you know, bagel or salsa, mayo. But you can use any onion you want. And we're just slicing it properly. Uh, you know, this is not this is not gonna um, it's all gonna cook down. So we are ready for our next step. Step. So turn the heat back on in the pan. You notice that there is already still sausage fat. We're gonna build on that. We are gonna add garlic. I'm cheating. I'm using already chopped garlic. We're gonna add the veggies in first. And then we'll add the garlic in once they've sauteed a little bit because we don't want the garlic to burn. Once it's burned, it'll start to permeate the perfume. The whole dish and nobody wants that sort of burnt 
after it takes the rest of their damage. Another tip while you're cutting onions is to make sure you don't fry. If you have the flame on the gas stove, the, the fire will, it will stop the onions, gas will stop the onions from oxidizing. It's what causes your eyes to tear up. So, there you go. Alright, this is going in. And let's just give this a nice stir. Um, I'm using a non-stick pan because it's a, one of the bigger pans I have. Um, you can use a dog, you can use you know other kinds of metal pan or what have you, um, especially if you want like a little crust. I think non-stick is easy, especially if you, you know, do any wood pot dishes you want easy cleanup. So Alright. So I'm just gonna give this a couple minutes. And then in maybe like two or three minutes, we're gonna hit it with our we're gonna hit it with a garlic. Well I'm gonna just clean up a little bit of my corn. Make it easier to cook everything. Okay. So on top of the board and use a different knife because we're cutting raw chicken. Uh, I'm slicing it up in chunks. You can buy already cut up chicken or chicken tenders and stuff from the butcher, but I can do it myself. It's really easy to get a really sharp knife. I'm using a serena knife, but you can use a regular chef knife to make sure it's sharp. You just kind of do long, smooth strokes top and bottom, and then use your fingers to separate it out. There you go. And now, you have these two, I have to flip it over so that you have better sort of balance. And then, we're going to just cut it in chunks. This is also a great way to do this for if you want to do make curry, or stir fries, or egg, or you know, any sort of like dish where you need chunks to meat. And then you can throw this right into plastic bag you can make more bowl with the marinade or you can put it into a right in the dish. So I'm gonna just put this cut chicken right back on the tray that it came on so I cut the rest. So if you have one that's like one of these like where it's folded, you can unfold it, you can find cut that part off. This is tender. Um, this is, this is, so I'm using, um, boneless, skinless chicken breast, but uh, you can use chicken thighs, um, and then also, um, you can cut this to whatever size you want. You like smaller pieces, that's fine. You like bigger chunks, that's also fine. You can even leave it whole. The only thing is we do is you can leave it whole, it just takes longer to cook. Cutting it all to cut down sometimes and increase the surface area for me to cut it. Well, physics for the win. So, um, what are some of your variations? I once did this with uh, with turkey bread, like uh, my turkey tenders. Um, they were interesting. They had a very gamey texture. I added like herbs, like sage. And or um, thyme, rosemary to my, you know, classic Thanksgiving flavors to my number line. It was a little different, but I'm just going to go and get my hand in the wash. I'm going to get some water. Alright. So now, so now, just going to get our veggies. We're doing great things. We've, we've resisted the urge to constantly be talking them before because we are doing our chicken. That's another reason why. And now we can start salting. 
be generous because this is, you know, it's going to be a big pot of food. <laughs> Starting to smell great and great things. You know, we're just we're sort of sweating the vegetables now. And I'm gonna borrow a phrase from one of my favorite uh food network chefs, Anne Morell. What happens when you sweat? When you go to the gym, you sweat, and what happens you start to smell because you release water. It's the same thing with these, they're releasing their water and it's starting to get color and start to smell like sauteing vegetables and you smell great. So, we are also going to now add garlic. So, I'm, using, I'm cheating. I'm using already chopped garlic. I'm using maybe about a tablespoon. So that I like it very much. Uh, okay. Awesome. That's the flavor. You can use less. Um, this is just chopped garlic. It's still fresh. Um, you can use less, you can, I would say this is about four or five cloves minimum, but you can use more or less, you can use up to ten cloves, um, I think four or five is a good amount, so we're about a tablespoon of So I'll see how they're starting to soften a little bit. So, you don't want these to like get really brown and stuff, you just want them to and we're going to continue to cook And we also want to make more cakes. We'll also come back from our sausage. Don't so be so good. It's brown, but they're not super cooked through. We can take our sausage juice and put it back in there. Yum. And we're just going to slice these also. Okay. Maybe similar size to the chicken. You want smaller, fine. If you want to skip sausage altogether, also okay. This is great. You can do this with tofu. You can do this with uh, with uh, beyond, like uh, the plant-based meat beyond, or uh, or uh, what's the other one. Possible. Uh, you can do this with just veggies. You can maybe add chickpeas for lots of protein. Um, or brown, you know, brown sausage. What have you made? And it's all going to be delicious. But if you're going to skip the sausage, you're not going to necessarily get that. That's or if you're going to use something like turkey sausage, uh, or chicken sausage, which has much less fat and more lean, then Add in a little extra olive oil or margarine or whatever, just so that it doesn't dry out and doesn't burn. All right, awesome. That is now really good. At this point, just just make a little move your veggies to the side a little bit. Make yourself some more room. And add your chicken. There you go. And the chicken. You just want the chicken to start browning. It's also going to be cooking while it's in there. Give this a couple minutes and then start stirring it. And then we're going to start building all of our liquids and let this sort of sit and forget about it. So, we can get everything else ready. This is going to have crushed tomatoes, or tomato puree, what have you. Um, you can use diced tomatoes, but you want something that's liquidy because it's going to give it that wonderful reddish brown color that the bois usually has, and also um, tomato flavor. You need broth. You need liquid to cook rice. You need about, usually you need about two to one ratio. For cooking rice, we're going to have a little bit extra because there's also all this other stuff in there. So I say about two and a half to one. So like about one cup of rice, 
to a half cup of liquid. So, we also need tomato paste. Jonathan, you say, why do you need tomato paste if we're adding in this other tomato to make that tomato? Fresh tomato, tomato. Because we need the tomato paste because it is a concentrated tomato. It tastes very tinny, very sort of like thick and, and like a lot of like metal tang. But it has such a deep tomato flavor. Like a big tablespoon or two tablespoons, it's about that's about two tablespoons. And when it's cooked out, it's uh it's delicious. Uh, it'll give it that rich tomato flavor deep in the dish. So we are we are now stirring the pan again. Breaking up the chicken, making up the veggies, tomato paste is some veggies deep in there now. That's gonna cook a little bit. You need to cook the tomato paste out a little bit so that it gets rid of that pan and flavor. You can use, even if you use tomato paste, the ones in like the tube, um, you buy it by where the pasta are, that needs to cook a little bit too. Just a few minutes. Um, do not substitute tomato paste for crushed tomato to tomato sauce. It'll not work. It'll be way, way too rich, okay? You won't get the sort of acidic sweetness you get from tomato sauce. Okay. So. Looking good so far, I think. Alright. And now. These are sorry. Alright. Okay so far. Now we are going to add about, if you have a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, add about half. If you have a 14 ounce can, add the whole thing, okay? I'm, I'm adding about half of this. You can always add more liquid later if you want. You don't want too much liquid. Then you'll end up with like a mushy, soggy, jambalaya. Nobody wants mushy, right? I mean, unless you like rice pudding. And that's like a totally different episode. So, around, we'll start cooking all of it, give it a wonderful, you know, flavor. Okay. And now is also the time when we'll season it before we put the rest of the liquid. So this is just Cajun seasoning. Um, it's, uh, it's usually a mix. It's usually got... Paprika, garlic, cumin, you know, some herbs. There are lots of different brands. They all have mostly the same ingredients. Pick the one that you like the best. Cajun seasoning is a little different from Creole seasoning. Uh, Creole is a little bit more with, like, the dehydrated vegetables. Um, which is good, but not exactly what we're going for because it's fresh. And then, this is gumbo filet. You can find this at some supermarkets or... You can definitely find it at like Penzi's or other special spice stores. It's it's got a woodsy flavor. It's made from brown sassafras leaves. Very classic and Asian looking. You definitely you obviously you know the name gumbo feel like you use it in gumbo, but also like it's maybe putting like it's two teaspoons in here. Gives it a wonderful deep flavor. A little salve in your mouth for a cheek. So let's give this a nice big stir. Right now, you could eat this, you know, as it is, you know, when you're cooking the chicken. It would be tasty. You can have it over rice, you can have it, you know, with mashed potatoes or something by itself, but we want to turn this into gumbo, right? Home grain type of rice um, is what's recommended. It'll even cook evenly. So that'll take about 20 25 minutes. If you're using brown rice or wild rice or something like that, it'll take longer. Um, so I'd say maybe more like 30 minutes, 35. But just check it after like 20, 20 minutes and give it a taste. If it's too hard, keep cooking it. If it needs more liquid, add liquid. This is it's not like baking. You could sort of play around with this a little bit. And if 
you're using parboiled rice, um, that's okay. Um, it'll just take less time. And if you're using like the bagged rice that's already cooked, or the 90 second rice for the microwave, or Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, the frozen rice, I wouldn't recommend it because it's already cooked, it's not going to absorb the flavor, it's going to get really mushy, so it's not that Oh! I forgot one of the components! Forgot to add the sausage back in! That would have been terrible! We want that delicious sausagey flavor going in everything! Ah! Good thing I remember! Alright! So, this is going to keep going, and remember, cook it, cover it, for this year to peak, unless it's been about 20 minutes and you think you want to taste the rice to see if it's done, then I give you permission to eat. Otherwise, resist the urge. Alright, see this is absorbing a lot already, so I'm going to add a little bit more broth, just because I added the... There you go. Tin foil, cover, back on. Alright. We are finishing at the end of our jambalaya. Look at this pan. A lot of the liquid has come out. And it's, everything is cooked. Very tomato is all come together in one dish. Um, I final touch, we're gonna turn, we're just gonna turn the heat off, you know, give it a taste if you're unsure about your seasoning. I tasted it once. And we're just gonna chop up some scallions. Um, very traditional. And we don't really want to cook them, we want to taste them. They'll give a little bit of, you know, garnish crunch, but they'll also, um, Give a little bit more oniony flavor. They're not super strong, but they're very traditional in southern, in sort of southern Cajun dishes, whether it's a garnish. And you can, you just want to chop off the ends of the white end, and then you want to use the greens just until the last couple inches. The top is very, uh, it's, you can't really break it down very much. It's very chewy and, and woody. You don't want to just give you the toss so you can get a little bit of everything. And just, you know, sprinkle it over the top. I would just bring this whole pan to the table. I think that's a great presentation. You know, look at that. Delicious. And let me show you how it looks straight it up. So I would just grab like a nice, a nice bowl. Nothing too wide or a plate even. Give yourself couple big spoonfuls. That's how hungry you are. Taste so garnish with a few more scallions. Yum. And then one of the most important parts. Hot sauce, right? What's Cajun food without hot sauce? I'm using Tabasco. That's what I have, but you can use crystals, um, Tallulas, what have you. I wouldn't necessarily use something like a sriracha because traditional hot sauce is great because it has a lot of vinegar based and you want a little bit of that you want that vinegar tang to help cut through the the richness of the tomato and the sausage and the rice. So give it a taste. Get like a Chicken, rice, scallion. Delicious. And that is jambalaya, one pot meal. Let me know how it came out.